New Strengths in the Fabric Islamic Tradition. This is our next topic. So for this topic, you take down a question. The question is, how did India become a part of the Islamic world? Question mark. How rulers who had faith in Islam maintained a balance with their subjects? Now the question, you have to understand the question. The first part, I think it's very clear. It is said that how India became a part of Islamic world. That means it was not a country where Islam were present or was found, but then suddenly how it became a part of this Islamic world. Another uh, part of the question is that uh, the maximum or the most of the people who were living in India during that time was or were uh, Hindus or some were uh, Buddhists or uh, Jains. But then how the people uh, could be maintained or how the people were maintained or how the people were balanced by the king who had a faith in Islam. That is what we are going to study in this part. So uh, whatever the answer is, it is from this 5 and 5.1. So let's see the answer now. So first of all, we came to know that Arabs merchant uh, frequently they used to come to uh, this part that means western coast in the first millennium CE and now during the same period some of these uh, people that means some of the Arabs they uh, they came in the subcontinent and settled in the north western parts now with the uh, with the advent of Islam and from the 7th century onwards this regions became a part of of that world which is often termed as Islamic world so it was only after 7th century that our country became a part of the uh, Islamic world now we have to study how it happened when it happened all these things so let's see first of all how this uh, establishment of Islamic authority started so uh, in 711 an Arab general by name Muhammad bin Qasim he conquered Sindh and after conquering it he annexed Sindh to Khalif that means to the domains of Khalif wherever the wherever Khalif uh, were controlling the land all this area was also uh, means the Sindh was also became a part of this uh, Khalif's area now later on at around 13th century Turks and Afghans they came to Delhi and they started to uh, you know they established one Sultanate by the name Delhi Sultanate now as Delhi Sultanate grew gradually they spread okay the Sultanate spread in Deccan and other parts of the subcontinent now the religion of the most of the rulers in most of the regions was Islam now whoever came in this uh, Delhi Sultanate, whoever fall under this Sultanate, they basically follow Islam religion. Now this situation remained till the establishment of Mughal Empire in the 16th century. Now many regional king or kingdoms emerged in the 18th century and most of them had faith in uh, Islam religion. So uh, this is how the Islam started now in a simple way if you just think after the coming of the Delhi Sultanate they did not just settle down or were happy with Delhi they started to spread the Sultanate far and wide and as they spread far and wide whoever went to uh, whoever went or who were, whoever were the part of the Sultanate they follow one religion that is Islam and thus Islam started to spread far and wide now many kingdoms or regional kingdoms emerged during this time that means in 18th century and once again whoever emerged they have to follow or they were followed uh, means a, uh, a religion was followed during this time and that was Islam they had a full faith in Islam then this is all about how it started then another part of the question is how did he maintain a balance uh, with the subjects now if you look carefully it is written that muslim rulers were supposed to be guided by the ulamas now when you say ulamas ulamas means what now ulamas here you can see 
it is said that ulama or alim now uh, are scholars ulamas are scholars and these scholars they are uh, they are the person who have studied the islamic trade as preservers of this tradition they perform various re uh, religious then uh, juridical or juridical and teaching functions means uh, whoever were they or whoever were there now this people as we said that muslim rulers were supposed to be guided by the ulamas whoever came to india whoever became the king or the uh, part of the sultanate actually they are supposed to be uh, you know guided by the ulamas it was expected from ulamas that they could ensure that they had rule according to the sharia sharia again is a law okay muslim law so now uh, whoever came as a king it was to be checked that whether these people are following the sharia and ruling according to the sharia another thing okay that uh, comes in this part is that the situation okay but during this time situation in subcontinent was complete uh, was completely difficult because a large section of population they were not islam okay or they they don't follow islam religion now in this context zimi okay now means protected category now this were some some kind of uh, people or a group who followed uh, some kind of scriptures right now uh, protected zimi now this zimi word was actually used for those people who reveal scriptures means and then like jews and christians living in the uh, regions of islamic rulers so what what are we studying is this now when the islamic kings when they occupied some lands or one area which was not at all islamic now when the sultanate spread they went and occupied that area conquered that area when they conquered that area in that area there were uh, jews they were christians they were different types of people so all this category they have to pay a tax and that was known as uh, jizya okay and in lieu of that in lieu of that means uh, because they are paying the tax right these people who are living under the king or under the islamic king this people have to pay tax and because they are paying tax what will they get they gain the right of protection by the muslim uh, rulers now because they are paying tax now the, it became a duty of the king to protect this people now hindus in india were also included among zimis that is why rulers like mughals regarded themselves as emperors of muslim and of all peoples now uh, what does this mean now you can see in the book also it's written that in india this status was extended to hindus as well means uh, they have to pay tax right and because they are paying tax they were they were controlled by or they were protected by the uh, mughal kings now this did not uh, remain with the people rulers such as mughal rulers came to uh, regard themselves as emperors of not just muslim but of all people that is what it said means he started feeling that i am not a king a mughal king he started feeling that i am not a king of only islam followers but i am a king of all the religion of all people who are living in that area that is that is what he started to follow and he started to believe then actually what happened is that uh, the rulers generally adopted a fairly flexible policy now remember he have to put a balance between uh, the people who are there and who came new now new means the islam followers and who are there means they might be hindus jews and uh, buddhists now they are there so there should be some balance so what did he do here uh, he started to have flexible policy towards his people subjects 
Now, for example, many rulers gave land grants and tax exemption to Jainas, Hindus, Zoroastrians, Christians and Jews uh, under religious institutions. That means whoever started to live here, now the king said that I will give you some kind of concession, right? And then this concession made people quite happy. Now they also express their uh, respect towards non-Muslim religious leaders. Now these grants were given by many Mughal rulers including Akbar, Aurangzeb, etc. Now let us try to understand little bit more on to this. Now I'll just say the same thing but in a different way so, so that it becomes clear. Now I talk about flexible policy. Now what is this flexible policy? Now uh, many rulers gave land grants means you know the land grants means what land was given or let us say uh, some kind of some kind of area was given to the rulers or even even uh, tax was exempted exempted means they don't need to pay R uh, the kings they started to get some kind of land whereas the people they started to get some kind of uh, tax exemptions now because of this the, all of them they were quite happy and so they expressed their respect to each other now here the muslim uh, king started to show lots of respect to the non-muslim kings or religious leaders and that is how that is how the muslim or the mughal rulers uh, including akbar Aurangzeb and others whoever came they followed the same pattern and that is how they remain or they maintain a balance with their subjects 5.2 the popular practice of Islam for this take down a question the question is how did Islam became popular in India so let's see the reason that why Islam became popular in India first of all we came to know that Islam was not limited uh, to only the ruling class but it went or it was it had taken entry into far and wide amongst the any social strata that is peasants warriors artisans and merchants now there were five pillars of faith in Islam and this is uh, it goes like this there is one God who is called as Allah and Prophet Muhammad is his messenger to offer namaz five times a day giving alms or zakat that means fasting during Ramzan and pilgrimage to Mecca that is Hajj was very important during their practice that means it became a very important part of their life and then many diversities in practices due to sectarian affiliation, local customary started. Now, when you talk about this, uh, what is that? Sectarian means what? There were many things started. Okay. Uh, diversities in practice. Diversities in practice means how to be practiced, how to follow this. It is not like fixed or it is not like only this way. It can be followed in any ways that you like. That means there came two sections, Sunnis and Siyas. And according to them, they follow. Now, Sunni follow this uh, five pillars of uh, faith in Islam in different way. And then uh, Shias, they follow in a different way. Now, one example is given. That is the Khojas, a branch of uh, Islam's or Ismail's developed way now this Khojas exactly it's a it's a Shia sect now they develop new modes of communication now how to communicate with each other they developed it. then they started to spread ideas which is or which was derived from Quran through indigenous literary uh, style then this included the you know the Gigan or Ginan that is uh, Janana meaning knowledge now all this thing means you know they started passing the knowledge from one place to other place now devotional poems they started writing in Punjabi Multani 
सिंधी देन कच्छी हिंदी एंड गुजराती नाउ इफ दिस मेनी लैंग्वेजेस वेयर टेकन एंड रिटन इन इस्लाम मीन्स यू नो मीन्स मेनी थिंग्स आर रिटन इन इस्लाम इन दिस लैंग्वेज सो ऑब्वियसली इट विल स्प्रेड सो दैट इज वाई इट स्प्रेड एंड वट एवर वॉज दे दे स्टार्ट टू सिंग इन स्पेशल रागास ड्यूरिंग डेली प्रेयर मीटिंग सो दे स्टार्ट टू यू नो एस बी एस एवरी रिलीजन हैव सम काइंड ऑफ डिवोशनल सॉन्ग्स दे ऑल्सो दे स्टार्ट टू हैव सम देन द अरब मुस्लिम ट्रेडर्स who settled along the malabar coast they had different way of uh, language okay they adopted one language and that was malayalam so as malayalam was uh, uh, you know practice or was followed that means in the southern part again there will be some kind of people who will start following islam religion they imbibed the local customs such as matrileni and a metri uh, local residents now uh, their way of living now you can see metri local residents means what where women after marriage remains in their natal home with their children and the husband may come to stay with them so this type of practice started because in islam they were not exactly following whatever was written in the quran but they started in order to make people more and more comfortable with the religion they started to blend with the religion now you can see in uh, kerala okay so what uh, what type of what type of uh, steps they have taken after marriage as it is said a man can go and stay with the women means in the women's family he can go and stay with them or with their children that is how the changes was brought and this was done just to get more and more people in the religion another or the last thing that uh, uh, we can just see is that the complex blending of universal faith with the local traditions that is in the architecture now uh, they can make buildings any way they like but because they are bringing the Uh, mosque in one of the area so they did not brought all the arabian or arabic style in construction of the mosque what did they do is they have to see what type of houses they love what type of uh, buildings they love or what type of architecture they love according to that they started to build up some of the buildings so the blend of islam was there with the local traditions and it was very much evident especially in the construction of the mosque so this is how the you know the uh, muslim or the islam became popular and at last you can see that the orientation towards mecca and placement of the uh, mihrab and the uh, minbar was a per islamic tradition but variations was there once again when they started to like you know mosque everywhere it is uh, it is of a uh, universal style we can say but their orientation towards mecca was evident in the placement of the mihrab means prayer area and the pulpit wherever you are they will see that according to the placement of the mecca only their direction of prayer kept on changing for example we are uh, the islam the islam followers they while praying while praying they don't pray towards the uh, facing the east side but they pray facing the west side why because the mecca is in the western side of of us that means arab is in the western part of uh, india I mean, when i say western part of india means it is to it is towards the west west country right arab then those who are in america those who are in uh, okay to the western part of our world that means america and all whoever islam is there in america while praying they will face towards the east and they will pray that is what it is said like wherever you are whatever style of building you make it but while praying they will just bow down towards mecca wherever mecca is according to that only they will pray now that is what it is said mecca evident in the placement of mir uh, mirab 
that means a prayer niche and the minbar that is a pulpit all these things became very much visible so 5.3 is our next topic names for communities so the question what were the basis of names for different communities in india so here we are going to learn like how do we got the names for different communities so let's see we generally take the names or terms like hindus and muslim for granted for religious communities that means uh, whenever we talk about hindus and muslims we had this idea that we are taking this name because of the religion but these terms hardly prevail for a long time means it these terms are not even used uh, for means it, it did not became famous very long time back historians who have studied sanskrit texts and inscriptions dated between 8 to 14 centuries indicated that uh, the term muslim was virtually never used anywhere right so remember this 8 to 14 century when they read the books they never found the term muslims instead of this people were mostly classified in terms of the regions from where they come okay from where they come for example turkish muslim uh, were designated as uh, turushka means they came from Tur uh, turkey and then in the same way people from tajikistan were called as tajika and people from persia were called as parashika sometimes terms used for other people were applied to new migrants for example the turks and the afghans were called as shakhas and yavanas because these people they consider them these people are you know the new migrants and they gave them a different name so another general uh, term that was used for this migrants community uh, and that was melecha now we also melecha means barbarians okay this term indicates that they don't uh, or they did not observe the rules of caste society and generally use those languages which were not derived from sanskrit and because of this a kind of name was given to them that is malechas such term sometimes had a uh, you know the connotations that they rarely denoted distinct religious community of muslims in opposition to hindus and all this way the names came up 